Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for this community briefing on COVID-19 and our local efforts to stop the spread of it. Joining me again is interpreter Margie Prop. Thank you so much, Margie, for joining us today. And thank you to all of you in the media and residents who have tu tuned in to hear this briefing. And we appreciate all that you're doing to be informed about how you can protect yourself, your loved ones, and our community. And just a reminder that we have lots of information available at our website, covid19.lincoln.ne.gov, including a data dashboard that contains information about our cases uh, where you can find out the latest, accurate, timely, and reliable information. It's updated once in the morning and once in the afternoon. Today in Lincoln, we have had a total of 45 individuals test positive for COVID-19. We reported this morning that 40 individuals had tested positive, and since then, another five have received lab-confirmed diagnoses. Of the grand total of 439 confirmed cases in Lincoln, 282 of those or 64% have been reported in the last seven days. As the health department has investigated the rising number of our community members with COVID-19, they have seen in the data that one of the reasons for the higher volume of cases is the outbreak at the Smithfield plant in Crete. Another factor influencing the higher volume of positive cases is our increased local testing capacity. We doubled our local testing capacity from 150 to 300 tests per day last week. The Bryan Health and CHI Health St. Elizabeth drive through testing sites completed 230 tests on Monday. That's about 77% of our capacity. So if you have symptoms of COVID-19, please seek testing. The process starts with an online risk assessment at chihealth.com or bryanhealth.com. And now here to provide more information about our health department's investigations into these cases is our health director, Pat Lopez. Our investigations have now identified 158 Lancaster County community members who are positive cases related to Smithfield and Creek. 91 are employees at the plant and 67 are family members or other direct contacts. Those 158 individuals represent about 36% of our total 439 local cases. At the Smithfield-owned plant here in Lincoln, we have identified nine positive cases related to the plant at that time. Six are employees and three are close contacts or family members. As the data is showing, these cases have contributed heavily to the increase in new positive cases we have experienced here in Lincoln. Of the new cases over the past week and a half, about 50% are connected to the Smithfield plant in Crete. Our staff continue to work many hours to do contract tracing of all of these positive cases. We currently have 16 contact tracers at the department and thanks to our Lincoln Public School nurses, we will have 11 more contact tracers beginning Thursday. In addition to seeing an increase in the number of positive cases, we have also seen the expected increase in the positivity rate, as the mayor mentioned. The overall positivity rate for Lancaster County is now up to 8.6%. The state's positivity rate is also up to 17.7%. The national rate remains at about 18%. Today, the hospitals report having 39 COVID-19 patients. That includes 12 from Lancaster County and 27 from other parts of the state. Seven patients are on ventilators. That includes two from Lancaster County and five from other parts of the state. Even though we've seen an increase in new positive cases, Lincoln's hospital capacity is still healthy. We talked with the hospitals this morning and they shared that the first day of starting elective surgeries in Lincoln went very well. In the work the health department is doing, we have become aware of the challenges when entire families are asked to isolate and quarantine. With the help of our lo local cultural centers, we are ensuring language is not a barrier to understanding what to do if people are asked to quarantine or isolate due to COVID-19. 
The dedicated staff of the cultural centers have been very busy providing area agency with translation services and helping us to get important information about COVID-19 out in multiple languages. This is so important to sure, ensure everyone understands how to follow instructions to minimize the spread of the virus. In addition, the cultural centers are monitor, monitoring the misinformation that is being shared and, created, and creating local responses. They are delivering needed medications and food to vulnerable clients and identifying other best basic needs to be met. They are also working with community partners to create care packages for people in quarantine. This will help provide food and other basic needs to allow for family members to stay home and avoid taking trips out into the public around other people for a period of time. We appreciate so much the great work of our cultural centers. They are an example of how battling COVID-19 is truly a community-wide effort. All sectors are working with the city to provide the services and information to all of our community members on how to protect themselves and their families. Thank you so much for your work, Director Lopez. And here in Lincoln, we certainly pride ourselves on our reputation as a city that welcomes new Americans from around the globe. I want to echo Director Lopez's gratitude to our cultural centers and the leadership they are providing and the service that they are providing to keep everyone in our community informed and safe. I also want to amplify Governor Ricketts' reminders about how everyone can be a part of keeping Nebraska healthy. First of all, stay home. Do not take unnecessary trips outside the home and respect the 10-person limit. Maintain physical distance from others outside your household. Work from home if you can, or use the six-foot rule as much as possible in the workplace. Shop alone and only shop once a week. Do not take family with you to the store. Help kids follow physical distancing guidelines, which we recognize can be challenging, but play at home. Have them play at home and don't do group sports and no playgrounds for the time being. Help seniors stay at home by shopping for them. Do not visit long-term care facilities. And exercise daily at home or with appropriately physically distant activity. And I'll add one more to this list. Proudly wear your face covering as a sign that you are doing your part to keep everyone in our community safe. As Dr. James Lawler of the University of Nebraska Medical Center has put it, think of face coverings as part of our social contract. I wear my face covering to protect you and you wear your face covering to protect me. Face coverings and physical distancing will continue to be important strategies needed to prevent the transmission of COVID-19 until we are able to find a vaccine. Next up, we'd like to spend a little time discussing the status of our local COVID-19 Directed Health Measure, or DHM for short. Originally, our DHM here in Lancaster County was scheduled to expire tomorrow, and we have extended the DHM through Sunday, May 10th. Governor Ricketts also extended the state's DHM for Lancaster County to be in sync with this same time period. Today, Director Lopez made that extension official by signing an updated version of our DHM that will be in effect from May 7th through May 10th. We wanna make sure that you know that this updated version does include several new provisions. You can view the updated DHM on our website at covid19.lincoln.ne.gov. And here are the three main changes of that updated DHM that we wanna share with you today. First, we have changed the language prohibiting body art facilities, massage therapy, barbershops, and cosmetology establishments to be more consistent with the state licensure language. This is a language change only, and these types of business operations continue to be among the gatherings that are prohibited. Second, the DHM allows religious services to be consistent with the state DHM on that topic. And thirdly, for safety reasons, the DHM now prohibits door-to-door -door sales and the processing of new peddler permits. Again, these updates to our extended DHM are in effect from May 7th through May 10th. We will announce later this week our plans for what comes next, beginning May 11th. What's important to remember here is that the overarching goal of our directed health measure is to reduce the negative impact, both 
health and economic that could result from increased transmission of the coronavirus. Equally important is the fact that while the DHM is in place, we use this gift of time to do the groundwork necessary both to contain COVID-19 wherever we identify it within our community and to ensure that our local businesses are informed and prepared to resume their operations as safely as possible when the moment is right. As I said last week, we all need to think about this process of reopening our economy not as an on and off switch, but instead like a dimmer switch. We will not be flipping on a switch, but rather we will be easing off the measures and practices in order to prevent flare-ups that derail our progress on the road to recovery. And now we're gonna share a little bit of good news with you all. Uh, Lincoln's first drive-through job fair that concluded at 2 p.m. this afternoon. All 500 bags of information were distributed to job seekers today at Gateway Mall. 50 local employers provided information for this job fair. And thank you again so much to Gateway Mall, to the Lincoln Partnership for Economic Development, Employ LNK and Brian Sack for creating this meaningful and safe event for our community. Another drive through job fair may be held in the future, so stay tuned. And finally, this is National Teachers Day. I think it's safe to say that in 2020, there has never been greater appreciation for the skills and talents and dedication of our teachers. Your students miss you, and their parents miss you even more, teachers. Uh, I encourage everyone to reach out to a teacher today and say thank you. And if you use social media to recognize our educators, use the hashtag thank a teacher. And with that, I open up for questions from the media. Hi, Mayor Riley Johnson from the Journal Star. Hey, Riley. I wanted to ask um, with the three changes for the um, new uh, local DHM that goes until Sunday. Could you discuss sort of the underlying reasons for those changes, specifically with uh, the peddler permits or door-to-door -door sales um, and the language tweaks with the state licensure? Was there confusion? Um, it seems the, the religious services ones is looking to align with the governors. That's right. I'll, I'll let Drez take those questions. Uh, hi, Riley. We did want to uh, have our language related to barbers and uh, massage uh, actually reflect what's in the current uh, statutes to just clean up that language just a little bit. So it really is just a cleanup uh, in that case. And the peddlers uh, is a discussion because think about it, they're going door to door uh, seeing people. So it's that contact um, that we're asking people to refrain from. And so that was the real reason for that, that it's really a, a safety concern and another measure to prevent the spread of the virus. And on that note with the peddlers, I mean, was that something initially not exactly foreseen in the initial DHM or was there reasons initially to not um, prohibit that, that then became apparent? Peddler permits, I've learned, are seasonal. So uh, the, the question just arose uh, because this is the time of year when the permits start um, being asked for. Pat, I had another question for you unrelated to the changes. Okay. When, you, when you look at the um, trend of cases related to the Smithfield outbreak. It, do you have any sense from your conversations with their health director in Saline County um, or through your own staff analysis of whether um, those cases are nearing a peak there or if they're, um, if they were, if some of them were not caught right away and thus cases were um, uh, kind of not controlled and the exposure was extending beyond their immediate household? Well, I think um, you, primarily what we're seeing is the exposure has been to the immediate household and the co-workers. Um, I just spoke with the health director uh, 
for public health solutions uh, before I came down here. And we're not, we're still awaiting more tests to come in uh, in those results. And I think we'll have a better idea tomorrow where we're at. There was increased testing done there late last week and some of those results are still coming in. If we need to, we'll do additional testing. The public health solutions that the county's health department. Public health is the name of the health department that covers Saline County, where Crete is. Do you know the percentage of um, employees at that plant um, that have been tested? I mean, do you, do you have a sense for if they're pretty pretty well? Um, uh, you know, they've done pretty much everybody that they could test. I don't think that's the case yet, and that's actually what the director and I were just discussing, and she's collecting numbers from the National Guard and Brian that did the testing so that we can assess where we're at, Riley. So I'll, pro I'll, I'll know more tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs> director Lopez, this is Bill with 1011. Would there, would there be a chance of blanket testing there for all 2100 employees i think i'm not going to say there isn't a chance i think some of that's being discussed about what might be the best course of action to take an unrelated question you had mentioned last week that the city was working hard to try to get um active case or, or at least a little bit of recovery data i was wondering if if you had made any progress on that or if you could comment as to how many of the 439 cases are active right now? Uh, Bill, we're actually, I had a meeting this morning with the staff working on that, and I think by Friday we should have some numbers for you. We would have, we would have had them, so we had to go back and investigate a couple of things. And obviously with the caseload number that we've had, we've had, uh, we have all of our, all of our staff is working on contact tracing right now, so that kind of, uh, move back a little bit, but it's brought forward now and they're working through the rest of them. Okay, thank you. Uh huh. Just a follow up on that, Pat. Do you know if there's a national recovery rate? Is that been determined? I have a national recovery rate anywhere because there was some discussion about recovery rates. At first, it was thought that you had to have two negative COVID 19 tests. Well, then the supply of tests was so limited, so CDC came up with some other guidelines. So that's why you're seeing a little bit why it wasn't captured immediately. But do know we, we know uh, our folks have recovered, but uh, you know, we're, we're based on science, and so we're gonna make sure our data is 100% when we report it. A question, question from Brent from Channel 8. Um, the Prime Haymarket Farmers Market is set for this Saturday. Um, depending on how many people show up, would that be a violation of the current gathering restrictions? Well, thank you. We were planning on, uh, we actually have a meeting uh, to discuss that uh, early tomorrow, and I'll be able to report, or the mayor will be tomorrow afternoon at the news briefing. Because, and again, remember, we're watching what's really actively happening in our community. And as we've been made acutely aware, uh, you know, our world changed from Saturday to today even. So that's, we have alternate plans in place. And the folks from the farmer's market have been wonderful to work with. And so we've been really fortunate in our community. People really want to protect themselves and they want to protect others. Are there any other questions? All right, well, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, please do your best to take care of yourself and your loved ones and help protect our community. We'll be back tomorrow at 3.30 with more updates.